Hey everyone, it's me, Arthur Cade. Welcome to Unique Truesdale, star of Gilmore Girls and now Gilmore Girls Revival on Netflix. We're chatting all about the iconic show coming back, so get ready for a great day behind the velvet rope. Hey everyone, it's me, Arthur Cade, and I've got unique, unique <laughs> yeah, there you Truesdale. Go. I knew you were we going to do that. We were playing around. I'm like, <laughs> he's like, just think of unique when you say my name, unique. <laughs> yeah. I would just change it to unique. All Forget right. It. I, let's go with that. I'd like from me. now on. I and just no, no last name like Madonna. You know, unique. I like that. Unique is here. If I was at a bar, I'd be like, my yeah. name's unique, and yeah. they'd be like, okay, what is it? Like, yeah. It's unique. <laughs> That's it. Speaking of unique, man, yes. everybody is uh, happily happy that there is a unique series yeah. coming. You like that? that yeah, I know. That, yeah, that nice. I Nicely done. Very I, smooth. I tried my hardest. Uh, <laughs> guys, I tried. I'm sorry. But that series yeah. you were originally part of, Everybody's Going Nuts, it is called Gilmore Girls, and it's coming back on Netflix. Congratulations. Crazy. Thank you. Thank you. We're very excited that we have new episodes for the fans because people have been re-watching it six, seven, eight times. So um, it's good to have new episodes. We're excited. I didn't understand how right. beloved this series was. It's, like. it's kind of, it, even for us that we're in it, it's kind of hard to understand it because we get it because we live with it and we've lived with it now for 15 years. But people are attached to this show in a way that it's hard for us to get, I think. It's funny because I was telling you, I interviewed Lauren Graham. Yes. She has a new movie out, so I was chatting with her and I did bring up congrats on the Gilmore Girls revival. And I ended up putting, we were like sharing the interview in different places. Yeah. And my Twitter was going nuts. Yeah. Like, yeah, I'm it's crazy. Like, I, like, do you deal with this viral thing? Yeah, I mean, I was not online before. I didn't have a Twitter account. I didn't have an Instagram account. And my people, when we started shooting, they said, ah, oh, you should. So I, start, I, I feel like I'm 95 years old. I'm a little <laughs> old with that stuff. And I posted on Twitter, which I was very new to it, a picture of Lauren and I the first day we shot the, the revival. And Twitter called my publicist, which apparently has never happened, and they represent big people like Ricky Martin and all that. And she said, we never gotten a call from Twitter because I had like 25,000 retweet. And apparently that is like a rare thing. Uh, be, it was just a picture. It was just a picture of me and Lauren. All right, I'm going to hold you <laughs> to something right now. You have to retweet our interview. Oh. <laughs> I want 25,000 retweets. I'm, do I have your word? <laughs> all right. All right. You better keep it. I did, um, but I didn't get that to, uh, to all my No, but yeah. dude, congratulations. So Thank you. What are people getting with this reboot? Like, what are they going to get from beginning to end? Just tell me the whole thing. Well, okay, I'll tell you. The, do you want me to tell you the four words? Because everyone <laughs> want to know the four words. Let's just say it right now and get out. No, of course I can't say that. But it's it's uh, it picks up uh, years later after it ends, and it's basically everything that made Gilmore Girls what it is. You got to remember the last season; it wasn't written by Amy the creator of the show. Right. So it was Gilmore, but it had lost a little bit of its essence, and everything is back multiplied by 10. Uh, it, it felt like when I read it that Amy had a lot to say that she wasn't able to say when it ended. So the scripts are very dense and very filled with everything that made it successful. I'm pretty confident that people will enjoy them. How important is that? I mean, we see so many times. A great example was Veep this year. Veep yes. With Armando. By the way, one of my favorite shows. The best. We've, yeah. I've interviewed the cast. They're just as funny in real life, which yeah. is incredible. Oh, nice. It's turned into a Veep promotion, but yeah. <laughs> when Armando left, people were nervous about will the quality of the show sustain and it did yeah. this season it's yeah. been brilliant you talk about Amy leaving how is it different as an actor obviously you're talking somebody else's words yes. but how is it different you you feel it I have to say you feel it it's still the same character you recognize your character but it's a little bit it's like Try to imitate, like anybody can imitate someone else, right? But it's still an imitation. The real person is the real person. So Amy has such a unique, specific voice and way of, of writing that it is very hard to mimic. I mean, they did good, but it wasn't Amy. And for us that have been saying her words for six seasons, we felt it. It felt a little like, oh, here's Michelle, a little bit. You know, they got the gist of it, but it wasn't... Michelle, from the inside, from within. 
What do you think it is about this show that makes it, these characters a show that makes it so beloved, that makes it such a fan favorite? It is very hard to pinpoint. The writing is definitely the key. Um, I think the characters are very lovable. I think it's a show about family. I think it is not cynical. It's a show with a lot of heart. So it's a kind of feel-good show. It's a show that you can watch, which people have done, with your daughter, with your son, with your girlfriend. And it's a show that you can watch really late at night and go to bed, and you're not going to have nightmares. Um, and it's a, show, it's a show that makes you want to have a good family, uh, a good, a good uh, a connection with your family. So I think that I think it taps into uh, everybody's desire to connect and have a good relationship with their mom or they de their dad. I think that's, that's a little bit of what, what makes it. We, and also, we're so brilliant. In yeah, I mean, the talent, the actors, the I mean, talent, the talent level. The talent level is just like unheard of. I'm sorry. <laughs> unique, unique, like the truth is, it's all me. It's all about me. All I me. mean, it's hard to, you It's know. all <laughs> me. You know, when you finish up a run like this, there's yeah. so many shows that sear their sear themselves into the Americ iconic mind. You right. know, like, you know, whether it's Friends or Seinfeld, Gilmore Girls, Gilmore Girls falls into that category. Yeah. As an actor, when you step away from that show, what is your career like? Is it easier to get roles? Is it harder because people I think see it you as someone? It depends who you are, and it depends what happens to you afterwards. I mean, talk to Melissa. She'll probably have a different answer I mean, than me. She's like the biggest star, and she's my friend, and I love her to death, and she deserves everything. She's brilliant. I left L.A. I've always had a love and hate relationship with L.A. And after the show, I went to Canada, and I did a couple of shows. Then I opened a spin studio. I did my own thing. <laughs> what a and, change. <laughs> you know, so, um, you know, so now I'm coming back to L.A., and everyone is like, oh, he's back, you know. And now there's a couple of, of uh, things up in the air. But it depends of where I'm Canadian so and my family. So it depends what your next move is and depends of a lot of things. And a lot of people thought I was me shell because no one knew me I lived in Canada before that show that was Gilmore Girls was my first job and my first audition in unbelievable LA. so no one knew so everyone thought it's like oh this guy is that guy is Michelle so every time I would go to an appointment or a meeting or an audition or whatever people would be like oh you don't talk like him it's so <laughs> weird like no it's a character right um, so there's a, there was a lot of education for my agent to do and be like, no, he's not that guy, and he's actually, so, you know, now I'm back, and uh, we'll see what happens, who knows. Was it an automatic yes in your mind to return, or yes. was, yes. were you like, I'm, I'm in 15 years later, Yes, because it didn't, it didn't feel satisfying, the ending, you know, it, it, it ended, we weren't supposed to end, and it ended, so we didn't really wrap up the storylines, fan felt cheated, we felt like, Ah, it, it didn't feel good, so I wanted to go back and end it properly with a satisfying ending for myself, but for the people watching and for, and also, you know, those people are my friends. We all kind of bonded and had this unique experience to be in the show that is now cult-ish show. And it's like high school reunion. You want to go back to hang out with your friends, right? And play again. You, so The power of this brand is so immense. To get yeah. Melissa McCarthy, like you said, yeah. she went from character actress on the show right. to arguably the biggest female comedic actress on the planet. Yeah. So to bring her back for yeah. a four-part reunion, yeah. it's insane to me. I mean, that yeah. tells you how much that project actually meant to everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, this is, if you look around and if you look at the industry, to do a show, first of all, that stays on the air for seven seasons, that could have very well stayed on the air for 10, that's 11, like 85 12. 85 in Hollywood Yeah, years. so that's so super rare. And to have a quality show that you actually care, you know, a lot of people have a great job, I won't mention any shows, that, you know, you get into the, you've been doing the show for 12 years, it's a good paycheck, but it's a little boring. Right. Um, but that wasn't the case with that. And because we've lived with the show for now 15 years, we were very aware, I, we, I live with Michelle every day, every day I, I, where I go, 
We're very aware of Are the place. Are you so actively recognized with that? Every is day, it? every day, <laughs> awesome. everywhere, all the time, which is great. But I've lived with it, and I'm very aware of the impact of the show and the place it has in people's heart. So if someone calls you back and say, hey, you know that show that changed a lot of people's lives and all that fan mail that you received, people were sick and that helped them get through their cancer and stuff, would you like to go back and do four more episodes? I think it's not really a question. It's like, yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll go back. <laughs> What's been the craziest fan reaction? What's been the craziest fan moment? I've had so many. Uh, I don't know. People, people in general are great, but uh, some people have weird reactions, like me being on the phone in New York, actually. I remember that. Being on the phone with my mother and someone wanting to grab my phone to stop talking <laughs> because they want to talk to me, and I'm like, Really? I'm on the, that's a little intense. I'm on the, you might want to hold, freak out. you know, I you might want to just like stop grabbing my phone. So sometimes people, but I've, I've, I've learned to manage people sometimes reactional off. I've learned to, to calm them and then you can actually talk. But some people get too excited and it's, it's uncomfortable for me. I'm just a guy, you know, so I'm like, okay, calm down. We're going to talk. It's okay. So. I've learned to deal with that, and then then you can actually connect with the people, and then it's great. But sometimes it's just super casual, and you know, oh, oh, the weirdest thing that I just remember now. I'm in Beverly Hills. I'm going to my dentist office, and they're behind, and they're calling me and say, "Can you arrive 20 minutes later?" And I go shopping, and a very chic Beverly Hills Rodeo Drive woman stops me, and she goes, "Oh." you and she grabs my arm i was like what have i done she's like hold on she goes through her purse shows me her cell phone and my face is her screensaver that's awesome <laughs> i was like what why do you have my she's like we all love you at my house my daughters and i we all have our your face on our um on our cell phone so i thought that was kind of strange but the flattering obviously but was it a cool feeling so the show begins to hit and you begin to become recognizable. Yeah. And essentially fame comes with that. Was it yeah. intimidating? Was it exciting? Like what was what was going on inside of you as people are recognizing you, as people love Gilmore Girls? Well, the show was my first show in America, but I've been doing television for nine, since I'm 19 years old. You told me you did a, a live show. You were yeah, I, I hosted a daytime talk show when I was 20 years old back in Canada. So I've been doing television for you know, over 25 years. So that part I kind of had practice back home in Canada. It was just more intense with Gilmore. The fans, I think, were a little more intense than what I was used to. And also in Canada, when you do a show and you travel the world, usually people don't recognize you. <laughs> it's not distributed worldwide. Uh, but Gilmore Girls was. And so for me to go to Paris or to go to a little village in Spain and have people recognizing me was strange. That part I had never uh, experienced before. But recognition, I've, I've learned to uh, be better at it. After I'm an only child, and my bubble can be big. And at first, I have to I say, yeah, I, I have totally to say, I, I was like, uh, hi, thank you. I didn't know how to, like, I, like I, people have a connection to you, but you don't know them. So there's something awkward because they feel they know you. You've never seen them. They've seen you ever. You know what I mean? So there's an adjustment there, which I have learned. And now I'm much more comfortable with. I'm older also. When you're younger, you're more insecure. So I've learned, I've learned. It gets in your head too, because even when I'm recognized yeah. and people are like, oh, I love the show, I love your interviews, and yeah. then it's like, I'm like, oh, that's so kind of you. And then you think back, was I an a-hole? Did right. I say something wrong? Are they yeah. gonna hate me afterwards? Yeah, it's yeah. always in my head afterwards. Yeah, I've, I've had that thought many times. <laughs> yeah, but I've, you know, you gotta be who you are and, and be kind, about, I'm always kind, but uh, you can't be loved by everybody. That's awesome, man. I can't wait. <laughs> I'm telling you, I had no idea. And I, when I interviewed Lauren, I know people yeah. love Gilmore Girls. Yeah. But then to see, you know, th what's crazy is to see how that show has translated yeah. to, to the millennial social media That's generation. insane because when we, we went to the ATX Film Festival, not this summer, but the summer before, before we did the revival, and it was the first time we saw each other in a long time. For some people, Lauren and Melissa, I see all the time. But we got there and they had to change venue twice because the people flew from Japan, from Australia, <laughs> from, and everyone in the room was 20. So there were five when we actually did the, the original show. So this is a whole new generation that caught up to it. 
by Netflix. I think Netflix is a big part of this new generation of 20-year-old that now are, are big fans of the show, but it's kind of, so, so it, it rolled over to another generation, another generation, so it's, it's that part I find fascinating. When I was in Austin, I, people were camping a day before we arrived, and all these girls, it's, it's crazy, yeah. What do you hope people take away from this when they see it? What, what, in the emotion, what do you hope they take away? I hope they will feel uh, satisfied with everything that they wanted it to be. I don't know what it is in their head, but I hope that it's all there. I think it's all there, but I hope it's all there. And I hope they feel that this is a better, uh, more satisfying uh, ending that the first time was. I hope they feel that way. You're awesome, man. Yeah. Everybody, I was going to say unique, unique. That's, like, <laughs> That's it. He's going to make it. That guy calls me unique ever again. <laughs> Yeah. Everybody make sure to check out Unique Truesdale. He is in the Gilmore Girls Revival coming to Netflix very shortly. Can't wait to see it. Buddy. And on Instagram and on Twitter now. Who knew? <laughs> and, he, and, he's, and he's actually moved into the 21st century on social My media. My 95-year-old Yannick Truesdale. You're awesome. <laughs> I was telling him, the Truesdale estate. There's yeah. a Truesdale estate now. Yes. He spells his last name. I'm like, I would have changed my last name. I should. It's in Beverly Hills. They have a lot of money. I would have been like, I'm the long lost uncle. I may not look like I'm any a, of you. I might do I'm it. Like, I might do it. It's not too late. Remember, I need a retweet. I need some of that money. I'm in okay. with you. All right. Good luck with that. Everybody, <laughs> make sure, everybody make sure to check out the Gilmore Girls Revival when it hits Netflix. Thanks, guys. See you soon.